Superior Vena Cava Syndrome. In this whiteboard video of our oncology emergency series, we will discuss an overview of Superior Vena Cava Syndrome. A detailed written module and virtual patient case are available on learnoncology.ca. You may wish to open this and follow along with them. By the end of the video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. The superior vena cava, or SVC, is a vein located in the superior mediastinum that extends from the left and right brachiocephalic veins to the right atrium of the heart. The SVC drains blood from the head, neck, upper extremities, and upper thorax. SVC syndrome refers to the obstruction of blood flow through the SVC and is often considered a medical emergency, or at least an urgency that requires rapid assessment and management. Interruption of blood flow in the superior vena cava can be caused by thrombosis or internal blockage, invasion, or extrinsic pressure exerted by pathology involving nearby anatomical structures. When the SVC becomes obstructed, collateral veins start to form, becoming alternate routes for the venous blood to return to the heart. When these collateral veins can no longer compensate for the degree of SVC obstruction, clinical features of SVC syndrome begin to arise. This may also happen relatively early if the SVC obstruction happens quickly, before there is time to establish collateral flow. Other times, this is an insidious disease process and can remain asymptomatic for years. Causes of SVC obstruction can be both benign and malignant. Up to 85% of SVC obstructions are due to malignant processes, with the top three malignant causes being small cell lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Other causes include germ cell tumors, thyroid cancers, and metastatic disease. Two to 4% of lung cancer patients will develop SVC obstruction at some point with small cell lung cancer patients at highest risk due to the rapid growth of their disease. Benign causes of SVC include thrombosis, goiter, fibrosing mediastinitis, and fungal infection, aortic aneurysm, and retrosternal thyroid. The signs and symptoms of SVC syndrome differ depending on the degree of the obstruction. The three Ds are helpful for recalling the major clinical features of SVC syndrome. This stands for dyspnea, distension, which includes edema of the face and arms, and dilated chest wall veins. Other signs and symptoms include neurological symptoms due to cerebral edema, chest pain and hemodynamic symptoms due to poor cardiac output, as well as symptoms such as dysphagia, cough, and hoarseness due to compression of mediastinal structures. SVC syndrome can often be diagnosed clinically in patients with overt presentations. However, patients with a history or physical that are only suggestive of SVC obstruction may require further diagnostic imaging. If a patient has a history of an intravascular device, a duplex ultrasound can be done to evaluate any thrombosis in the upper extremity. If a patient has a history of malignancy, a CT or MRI may be warranted to evaluate the degree of blockage and cause of obstruction. If there is no history of either, a chest x-ray may be done first to assess for SVC obstruction by looking to see if there is mediastinal widening or pleural effusion present. The main goals of therapy for malignancy-related SVC syndrome are to relieve symptoms and to treat the primary malignancy. Severe symptoms, such as central airway obstruction, respiratory compromise, or CNS depression, require urgent treatment with endovenous stent placement, radiotherapy, and or corticosteroids. Non-severe symptoms require a histological diagnosis to determine potential responses to treatment. Chemosensitive malignancies can be treated with chemotherapy with or without radiation, and chemoinsensitive malignancies can be treated with a stent or radiotherapy. In general, chemotherapy is best for small cell lung cancers and lymphoma, while radiotherapy is best for non-small cell lung cancers and others. In rare circumstances, if symptoms persist, surgical intervention may be considered. 
The patient prognosis of malignancy-related superior vena cava syndrome is highly variable depending on the primary malignancy implicated. This concludes our discussion on SVC syndrome. Please visit learnoncology.ca for further information on this and other oncology topics. Thank you.